I let out just so he would raise. He fell for it, but he had a set. Phil Hellmuth is an infamous whiner at the poker table. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how, if you pay attention, players as elite as the poker brat himself will reveal information that you could use in your next session. I get it. You only have so much time to play poker with your other responsibilities. And players like Phil kill your focus. You want to be polite, but you also don't want to give someone all of your waking attention at the poker table when you'd rather stack them. Have you seen that movie 21? It's about that infamous MIT blackjack team in the 90s that took Las Vegas for a run. There's a scene where that team is training in a room with a bunch of distractions. There's people yelling, making noise, walking by, a lot's going on. The scene builds to a point where the student is asked what the count of the deck is. Bro, what the hell is you doing? What are you doing? I haven't done anything. Get off me. Get off. I haven't done anything. Please, please, let go. What's the count? Please don't hurt me. I said, what's the count? I haven't even done anything. What's the count? Plus 18. Oh, you've got to be kidding. Congratulations, Ben. Sorry, we had to make sure you keep the count under pressure. Welcome to the team. The annoying players who won't stop talking about the hand they would have won if they were in it, those are your MIT Blackjack team training partners. Tune them out or pay the price. Focus on the game. A player who constantly tells you what they would have done if they were in this hand, or what you should have done if they had your hand, can influence you. Because when you get down to it, we are social creatures and we do want acceptance. The poker room can be a place for that, but you have to ask yourself, am I here to win or am I here to make friends? The two aren't mutually exclusive at the poker table, but with these types of players, you're better off picking one or the other. If you have aces, and you're fairly certain somebody else has kings, would you try and get all the money in? Or would you feel bad about stacking your neighbor? I'm gonna try and get it all in. They shouldn't take losing their kings to aces any more than you should take somebody like Phil Helmuth's behavior personally. It's a projection of how they think and feel. You'll hear the word should ad nauseum, and you should ignore it. The Phil Helmuth types are there to prove something. What it is, I never feel like I know. Don't take their behavior personally. Instead, look at it with curiosity. Why did he say that? Why did he say that in that tone of voice or at that time? When you start to look at these types like an equation to solve, it can be a fun way to stay off your phone and away from being on autopilot. You have an enigma right in front of you. Switching the focus from this guy's annoying to why does he act this way, can keep your creative juices flowing and keep you away from going on autopilot. But then they don't understand the subtlety of the trapping game. Great. $1,000. The only way I can go broke, the only way I can lose any chips, and then he has to raise exactly you 20. Pocket, can you bet that? You bet <laughs> five, of course I bet that. <laughs> Ever notice how people treat you differently when you're dressed up? The same can go for how you talk to people. These types can be obnoxious, but if you're polite and concise, they may want to prove their point to you less than the other people at the table who are challenging their opinions. Use deflection or yes them to death. Phil Galfon talks about this in a recent video, and I commented that I would try doing this in my own sessions, but it's like when you buy a new car, and you see that car every day, it's like that, but the opposite. Being social at the poker table is great, but not at the expense of missing showdowns and your opponent's betting patterns. When you play live poker, can you see your opponent's whole cards? If you're a good neighbor and you don't peek, the answer is no, because poker is a game of incomplete information. These types of players don't like to look or feel anything other than perfect, which leads them to only be creative 
when they have thick value hands. They are much more pessimistic with running a big bluff. They'll tell you that they were going to bluff, but decided not to because they knew you were going to call. They speak with absolute certainty. Remember what I said about poker being a game of incomplete information? Maybe they'll tell you that they were going to trap the whole way and just let you keep bet, bet, betting. Okay, you can use that next time you have a marginal hand. Maybe you're not going to value bet as thin versus that specific player because you know that they're trying to trap people. Or they would have gone all in on the flop because they knew the flush was going to get there. Ever play with somebody like that? Well, now you know that they are prone to overplaying hands. Get ready to catch some punts. These types of players will spill the beans on their thought process. Listen up because you can use it. I limp in with like, that time I had ace 10 suited, I limp. I would have also limped with ace king, aces or kings. Because Keating has a live 400 on, he's always gonna raise. I'm only worried about you one out of every 220 odd hands. <laughs> Just aces? You don't care if I have kings or ace king suited? You'd probably limp or golf. That's a fair, that's a fair. It's important to focus on yourself when annoying players are at the table because just like Phil Hellmuth, they're not going to change, no matter how much you huff and puff. I created this channel to make the poker community a healthier place. That includes what goes on inside your head as much as it does what you eat, drink, your sleep. When annoying players are at the table, it's important to focus on the things you can control, like your emotions, your reactions, and your perception of the situation. Now, if all else fails, table change. Can I get a table change? If you got some value from this video, drop a like, consider subscribing, and I'll see you on the felt. Oh my gosh, do get the knee, I guess. <laughs> You're hobbling, are you injured? I think the, the sore, sore thumb on this table right now is uh, your 300K. Uh, why are you buying in for 300? I promised, I promised. People were complaining when I was doing live streams. Oh, Phil doesn't buy enough money. And, uh, and he plays tight. And I'm like, okay, I don't mind playing tight, but I have to at least correct the money part. So I kind of vowed that I would buy in for 300,000 minimum of my own money uh, for every live stream I ever shoot, every poker show I ever shoot, at least 300K. And if I do high stakes poker at uh, that show, I'll buy in 500,000 of my own money. So how live is that 300? Do you have like a 20 in your mind that you're gonna play I, a little bit with? Or I like mean, 280s like? 